Hello and welcome to Vermin Hunters TV with me, Cy Pitway. Today I'm calling the show from rags to riches, and the reason I'm calling it that is it's all about this rifle here. This is a Virac HW80, and I bought this about two and a half weeks ago off the gun trader from a gentleman in Herefordshire. And to be honest, when I first bought it, it was in poor state. The actual stock had gouges out of it, and this is the actual stock. Uh, the actual covering, what the stock had on it, and the varnish was all pitted off and it looked like it even been putting out cigarettes actually on the stock because there were burn marks on it the whole of the barrel and the action was covered in rust and it had uh, a silencer on which wasn't a very good silencer so uh, I bought it off him anyway it was going to be a project gun and I wanted to try something myself and just see if I could make something out of it so as you can see this is what we've done and it's done between myself and Davey uh, in my garage at home and in Davies man cave uh, stocks all been rubbed down gouges got out re-stained re with dark English oak and then uh, linseed oil coated I fitted an adjustable butt pad which is one I already had so it was no extra cost for me uh, and a sling I already had the scope what came with it was a crossman scope which uh, it was okay but it didn't have any uh, caps on so when you actually dialed in the zero it was easy to knock off so I fitted now a new Hawk Sports HD 3 to 12 by 50 AOIR with a really nice thin mill dot reticle this has got inside it and it's on high high mount got a Sandal Field Sports uh, silence here what Tony Wall uh, gave to me probably about six months ago uh, and it keeps the rifle nicely balanced and the blue in once we'd polished it uh, on Davies polishing machine and, and removed the bluing uh, I then re-blued it myself and I don't think I've done a too bad a job now the kit what we put inside this was basically bits and bobs of different things now Davey had a spare VMAC kit and he had uh, a top hat there and he also had a PTFE spring guide so we took out the metal one for what it comes with the 80 uh, and also the metal washer and we put in a PTFE spring guide and a PTFE washer uh, and the VMAC top, top hat on the spring the power was redu reduced as you'll see uh, in a little while uh, and it's set basically just how I wanted it I'm going to use it predominantly for shooting rabbits and vermin now while we're on this subject I just want to mention uh, these so called tuning kits what you can buy the VMAC kits uh, and other kits I know Tony Wall at Sandal Field Sports does a kit himself it's basically I think a spring, a guide and maybe some some lubes and I think even might be a top hat, I'm not sure but Tony don't call them tuning kits and the reason he doesn't call them tuning kits is because they're not because if you was to buy one of these kits, a VMAC kit or one from Tony or whoever else sells one and you put them in your rifle your rifle isn't automatically tuned you've had pit, bits put in which is going to improve its performance but it's not a tuned rifle now there's a lot goes into tuning and over the next few weeks myself and Davey will be up at Sandwall talking to Tony and we'll be doing some filming and Tony's going to explain a little bit more detail about a stage one and a stage two tune and what goes into it. I can tell you now there's hours of work goes into a stage two tune uh, and you need specialist equipment to do it i.e. a lathe and the know-how how to use the lathe. So without further ado then I'm going to get on I'm going to show you how this shoots. Now, I'm not expecting it uh, to be as good as a t any other Mattoon rifles uh, I know it's not going to be, it's fettled and it's improved uh, and it's 100% better than it was when I bought it.
I do now. Come in, press the function button. Tell me the lowest shot is 546.6, which is the last shot I did. The highest is 554.1. Average 550.3. Uh, and I think you, I think this is saying it's the shot deviation. I think that's what it's saying. 7.49, but I worked that out myself uh, just to make sure it is. So there's the uh, Alpha Chronic, really good bit of kit. Right, I've got all the results worked out now on this piece of target card here uh, and from the 10 shots I'm pretty pleased with uh, the results. Fair enough it's nowhere near uh, the sort of results I'd get from one of my other tune rifles done by Tony Wall at Sandwell Field Sports because there you're looking at sort of like a total deviation of around about three or four foot per second sometimes a bit a little bit lower so this one give a total deviation uh, of 7.49 so 7.5 feet per second over 10 shots which is not bad because that works out at 0 0.745 uh, feet per second deviation per shot which is pretty good really uh, and I'm pleased with that anyway the lowest velocity uh, was 10.55 foot pound uh, the highest velocity was 10.84 foot pound so uh, when you're doing an average you still need to work out what the highest was because it can still be over if the average is close to the legal limit and the average uh, was 550.3 feet per second which worked out at 10.69 foot pounds of energy so I'm really pleased with that it's just like where I like it in the uh, higher tens it may click climb a little bit more uh, as the new piston seal uh, beds in a little bit more but I know it's not going to go over 12, so I'm really happy with that. Right, as you can see, the rain's started now, and th there's a slight breeze, as you'll see from the flag moving in the uh, background, but hopefully it won't affect what I'm going to do too much. I have been zeroing off camera, and I've got the point of uh, the actual impact probably around about a couple of pellets width from where I want it, but I'm going to shoot a group now and adjust the mean point of the group at the end to get that fine zero. I'm at 25 metres, so 27 yards, uh, and this is my preferred zero range for both 177 and 22 now. The reason I do it in 22 is uh, I, I believe it gives just about the perfect uh, trajectory I want. I work on a 20 mil kill zone, not a 25 mil, and in 177 you don't have any old under whatsoever, it, you only have to worry about old over. So it comes in handy when I'm doing HFT. First shot was a good one. Now just getting up a little bit, just moving a bit more. Give it a second. There you go. That's three shots. And that's pretty good. We'll zoom out and then we'll go and have a look at that one. Right, I brought the camera up to the target because I didn't really want to pull it off because with it being a little bit wet the card it might make the actual hole bigger than it is uh, I've got obviously the UK, UK 5 pence piece here and you can see the actual 5 pence covers the aim point and the whole group uh, so it just goes to show how small that group is so yet again if I was to put the 5 pence piece on the edge of the group it's probably 
one third of the size lot. It's probably a third of the size of the five pence piece. So I'm quite pleased with that. For 27 yards, 25 meters. Right, I've made an adjustment of two clicks up and one click left on my turrets. So hopefully they're going to be somewhere in there just about bang on. What I've done now then is put a map pin out. And a map pin, uh, the red one's probably around about six and a half, seven millimeters. So just a little bit bigger than a 2.2 caliber pellet. And I'm going to try and hit the map pin. We'll do it in a few shots. Well, one shot. There you go. I suppose that's one of the benefits of actually shooting a group and then moving the main point. Uh, you can see now from the flag that the wind's got up a slight bit uh, and it's moving the flag a little bit more than it was earlier on. Zoom into the 50 meter point. You can see I put an A4 piece of paper up with a red map pin at the top. I'm going to keep the red map pin as my point of aim and shoot a group. just want to see how this rifle groups with this pellet at this range. I'm not expecting it to be anywhere near as good as one of my tuned rifles. I've got what Tony's done at Sandwell, but hopefully I can keep them under an inch, which I'd be pleased with. So this wind ain't going to affect this too much. Aren't too bad. Ooh, that one I still went through one of the other holes, so that's not too bad at all. It's a bit better than I thought it was going to be. I'll zoom out and we'll go and have a look at that. When I brought the camera actually up to the target end because I know our paper rips I'm trying to remove it and looking at it it's not too bad see there's two touching and one just off to the side but even so less for the rip which is that's just paper rip there as you can see it's not the old I can cover them three with a five pence piece and this is I think 17 mil so I'm happy with that. It's better than I thought it was going to do. But like I said, it's not as good as I would have got with one of my tuned rifles. But for what I'm going to be using it for, which is a primary uh, rifle for shooting rabbits and vermin, you know, that's good enough accuracy. Right, I'm just going to do a little experiment now. And the reason I'm going to do it is because now I've shot that three shot group at 50 metres, I pick the centre of that group and it works out on times 10 magnification, four and a half mil dots for a more precise calibration. So in the middle of that paper is a map pin. As I said before, it's around about 6 or 7 millimetres, just a bit bigger than a 2.2 calibre pellet. The wind is blowing a little bit, but I'm going to see how close I can get to it on 4.5. And, and 
and that was first shot first take no editing that's just hit a map pin at 55 yards just before I finish on the range for today I'm going to zoom in and you'll see I put some bottle tops three of them in the sand and they're at 51 meters just underneath. I'm going to try four and a half mil dots. There we go. Four and a half mil dots is what it needed. Bearing in mind these are small targets, this rifle is doing really well. And there you go, and you could hear that short uh, plastic being impacted, they are true hits. Right, before we come to the end of um, Rags to Riches uh, and this episode of Vermin Hunters TV, I did mention that the 80, now it's restored, is going to be used predominantly for vermin control rabbits, corvids uh, and pigeons with the odd dove. Well, I think it's only fair that I show you how it works now, doing what it's actually been restored to use uh, for. So I'm on one of Davies' permissions uh, in Wiltshire and I'm in a hide, it's a natural hide as you can see around me. It's basically I'm just in the middle of some bushes and some nettles. Uh, and hopefully today we're going to get some corvids, uh, maybe some pigeons and doves. My ranges I'll be shooting at are from 47 metres to the closest target or the closest area I'm going to be shooting is probably around about 15 metres. So fingers crossed, I'll get some on camera for you. Unfortunately, from this hide, it's not always dead easy to get the camera onto shots. So this one, you see a really nice brain shot. I had to take that from the kneeling unsupported position, and that was about, say, about 35 metres. It went straight down. So the HW80 is uh, doing its job and the refurb has obviously brought it back to its former glory we can get some more shot there for the 80. Took that pigeon straight down. Got it. The 80 is rocking today. Well, folks, that's it for this episode of Vermin Hunters TV from Rags to Riches. I hope you've enjoyed it. Goes to show with a little bit of love, care, and attention to detail, you can restore a rifle that's gone way past its best days back to something as nice as I have done with this HW80. A couple of thank yous. Firstly, to Davey, my channel partner. Uh, for showing me how to strip this rifle down, for helping me de-blue it and also polish some of the parts. 
and to Daryl aka Marksman from the Hunting Life Forum and from Geordie Hunters TV for dating the rifle for me. Turns out this particular model is a 1995 model, so quite old but shooting as well, hopefully as it ever did do. This rifle is a keeper and it's going to sit in my armoury alongside my tuned rifles. Now fair enough I admit it doesn't shoot as smooth and as nice as one of my tuned rifles but like I said before fitting a kit doesn't mean a rifle's tuned so I never expected it to. If you are into tuning please look out for the episode in the future where me and Davey's back at Sandwell with Tony uh, talking and filming all about tunes. It's unfair for me to speak more on tuning as it is because I, I don't really know anything about it. Uh, this is the first rifle I've ever fettled with, I should say. Uh, and what I know about tuning, Tony's probably forgot more. So just wait out for the episode and we'll get it from Tony himself. So thanks for watching, stay safe and look out for future productions of Verminuntus TV.